What's up, Cyclone fans? This is Cody from bcdivide.com, Black and Cardinal Divide. This is a rivalry site, Iowa and Iowa State rivalry site that my brother and I launched back in July with the help of our team over at Farm Boy. Uh, I wanted to give a little Monday morning quarterback time in here and, and change things up a little bit and get get away from the uh, the written uh, type articles that uh, every other media outlet in the state has. So I hate to uh, bore you with my uh, non-beautiful uh, body here or face, but I'm going to give you a little update on uh, a recap of the Akron game on Saturday, catch you up to speed on some uh, big news and announcements that uh, have been made with uh, Cyclone Nation here on Monday morning. So uh, just to recap the Akron game, it's a game where uh, I fully expect that expected Iowa State to go in and win that game. Um, I really did. The talent level and the disparity between the two teams was uh, substantial going in. And, and as an Iowa State fan, that's a game where you... You're nervous because you know how Iowa State football has been in the past, but if you know uh, this this team and this program right now and this coaching staff, I was confident going into this game that this was a game that we were going to get a, a, a victory at. And uh, things got a little dicey in the second quarter there. You know, we struggle late in the second quarter of games to uh, kind of close, close out halves, I should say. We got off to great starts and then uh, our inability to close out a half and keep teams out of the end zone there with kind of under two minutes in the second quarter was a, a reason for worry as Akron uh, closed it up 20-14 uh, to 14 to end the first half. They trailed by six points, and then our defense came out and pitched a shutout in the second half, and I couldn't have been happier. That defense was led on Saturday by Joel Lanning. Uh, Lanning ended up with eight tackles, three solo. He had a pass breakup, an interception. Uh, he was all over the field on Saturday. He was named... Uh, College Sports Extreme, I think it was the side or something like that, but he was named their Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, he did not receive the Big 12 honors for Defensive Player of the Week this uh, this morning as that announcement was made uh, and given to, a, I believe, a defensive end from Texas. But uh, David Montgomery in, impressed again. Uh, he had a hot, over 100 yards of, of rushing offense. He accumulated 173 yards of total offense for Iowa State, and he uh, added to his uh, – broken tackles record that he is just destroying right now. He's eight over what he had for all of last season. He is leading nationally uh, and by, I think, four or five broken tackles. This isn't something to where it's close race or he's tied with anybody nationally. This is not a fluke either. I want to make that clear. Uh, Coach Campbell and his staff has, have stressed um, all offseason long the importance of the weight room and the turnaround that's been made in that weight room. And it's, uh, it's apparent to me so far. Even in that Iowa game, I know our defense got tired and our defense was sure on the field a lot in that game, but this, the notable difference to me is the stamina. This team is, uh, they're bigger. Coach Campbell himself said that the number of guys that are benching over 300 pounds, I believe, has more than doubled or tripled from last year. I got to believe that the squat records, and or not records, but the squats, um, the numbers of guys uh, uh, benching and squatting obviously are, are going up. So uh, that's... Uh, uh, an attribute uh, that, that happens, and then when you see the, the turnover on the field, uh, a guy like David Montgomery who runs the ball hard and uh, practices. Uh, I just got off the teleconference with Coach Campbell, and Coach Campbell, he made a point to say that, listen, the Montgomery you guys see on Saturdays is the David Montgomery that we see every single day. This is the way he practices. On Tuesdays and Wednesdays, he comes into these practices, and he, he prepares like it's a game. Um, in, in practices like it's a game. And that's something that elite athletes do. Uh, so this is no fluke for David Montgomery. This is something that's well-earned and uh, something that he's, he's going to he's going to continue to build off this throughout the year. So uh, Big 12 defenses take note uh, that our offense runs through uh, David Montgomery. And on that same teleconference, Coach Campbell said he is the catalyst for our offense. So that's... Uh, it's going to be an important part for defenses in the Big 12 to do is to stop him. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, we're really utilizing our good run game with Montgomery to open up our passing game. And uh, speaking of passing game, Trevor Ryan played a great game on Saturday. Uh, Trevor finished, I believe, with six catches for 80 yards. He was the leading receiver on Saturday. Played a good game. You know, uh, Park spread the ball around quite a bit. Uh, Park himself threw for 317, two touchdowns. Uh, the most important statistical uh, part for Jacob was zero interceptions on Saturday. He got away with one early, but really settled in and played a good game. And uh, I believe he ended up 24 for, for 32, I think, or 20. He, 
I don't know, 22 for 34, but he played a great game. Uh, all in all, Jacob has really impressed me since he started got the starting nod last year. Uh, he's settling in nicely, and he's got, uh, I'm sure he's stressed, but he's handling his stress and his uh, probably sleepless nights uh, after the birth of their child recently. But um, he's handling all that well. I, I, I really hope and pray that his academics are coming along as well. Um, he's a good kid, and, and I wish nothing but the best for him and his continued success this year throughout the Big 12 season. He's a fun kid to watch. Uh, some other notable guys here, tackle-wise. Ray Lima played a good game on the defensive line. Uh, Stat-wise, he only finished with one tackle. Uh, but it's not what he – as a defensive lineman, you don't need to record tackles, okay? That's one thing that coaches will teach and coach is that you, as a defensive lineman, you are truly doing your job if you are stuffing holes and you are gaining the attention of more than, more than one offensive lineman. If you can be a force on the inside to where you gain the attention of two offensive linemen, that's freeing guys up on the defensive side of the ball. And, and the results, the proof is in the pudding, okay? Uh, Joel Landing and uh, – uh, PV were our leading tacklers, excuse me, Willie Harvey were our leading tacklers, and uh, that goes to show that the defensive line is doing a good job. Uh, Coach Campbell mentioned uh, on the teleconference this morning that that defensive line needs to continue to uh, to develop throughout the season. He's, he's getting a lot of guys in there. They're seeing a lot of playing time, and it's been fun uh, to see the, uh, the nice rotation. J.D. Wagner had a good game, four tackles. Uh, DeMonte Ruth, six tackles. He really stepped up big in that secondary and played a, played a good game for Iowa State on Saturday. So all in all, that Akron game, that's a game that, you know, I mentioned earlier, that needs to be won, that's expected to be won. It was a homecoming game for a lot of our coaching staff, and uh, it was cool to see Kyle Kemp get in there at the end of the fourth quarter. He's an Ohio boy, a, a graduate from uh, Mass Massillon High School or Massillon, Massillon, or I don't know however the heck you say it. But anyways, it was cool to see him get in there and kind of play a little bit of a, a home game. Uh, there towards the end as the score had uh, got things out of hand. But um, offensively, uh, I, the one thing that, that I really struggle with, I guess I'll jump back to the defenses, that needs to be improved upon is our third down defense. Um, against Iowa, we gave up 7 of 15, I believe, on third down. And looking back, I think four or five of those out of seven were of third down and 10 or more. Um, that's huge. That's deflating for your defense. That's tough. Really puts you... Uh, um, in a tough situation defensively. And Iowa State kind of struggled with that against Akron on Saturday again as they were – Akron was 3 of 8 – or excuse me, 11 of 18 for on third down. Uh, so the efficiency was still pretty high. So that's something that Iowa State needs to continue to work on um, from, from a defensive standpoint. Offensively, Garrett Owens uh, was 3 of 4 uh, from field goals, uh, or 2 of 3, I guess. And, and he did miss a 25-yarder, kind of a chip shot. So um, – we need to get those kinks worked out. This is a game where that's, that's, a, that's something that we're, we're going to need him down the line, okay? As Big 12 play gets ramped up here in the weeks to come, you can't be missing 25-yard field goals. Uh, so I know that Garrett's a good, hardworking kid, and he's going to really get things straightened out. And His other two kicks looked great. He did a good job on kickoffs as well. And Colin Downing had uh, some good punts again. Shout out to the special teams. Uh, Downing had four kicks. I think his average on Saturday was 40 yards. Uh, coming into Saturday, he was averaging 47 yards per punt. And, uh, you know, special teams are huge. It's a, a big part of the game. Uh, penalties, we need to crack down on penalties also. We had seven penalties for 72 yards. That's got to come down. Uh, you can't give up 72 yards in penalties. Uh, that, that's uh, unacceptable. If you want to win big games, you really got to cut down on that. Uh, turnovers, we had two fumbles on Saturday. Thankfully, we regained both uh, the possession on both of those. That's something that needs to change. Uh, we, can't, we can't expect to always get those fumbles back, but we also have to understand that's part of the game and that's something that's going to happen. So, um, Some big news recruiting-wise this morning is uh, Sean Shaw Jr., a wide receiver out of Oklahoma, has committed to play for Coach Campbell. Uh, Coach Campbell tweeted something out early this morning. Sean Shaw, uh, he was recently on a visit. looked like he came up with his dad. He's out of Oklahoma, a wide receiver, a three-star kid. He... Uh, he committed this morning, shortly after, about 25 minutes ago, actually. He blew up on Twitter, and uh, it's a good kid. It's going to be fun to see him uh, line up on the field at the same time with Carson Schlecker. Those two kids are going to be ballers and uh, really going to, going to put an emphasis on downfield play and a kid that can develop and do what we have now with a guy like Alan Lazard. So that's exciting. Uh, we'll jump over to the basketball side of things here real quickly, but <clears throat> Saturday, um, or uh, today, I guess, uh, Tyrese uh, Halliburton from uh, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, he has, um, will be making his announcements, I guess, today 
as to where he's going to be going to play college ball. And uh, all things pointed, it looks like he'll be headed here to Iowa State to come join Cyclone Nation. Uh, he has offers from you and I, uh, Minnesota, Nebraska, and uh, uh, let's just hope he ends up here today. You know, at Iowa State, he, he's a good kid. He's got great length. Uh, he's a good defender. His off the ball ability is is great. He's a good kid that knows how to set good screens and. Um, He'll be a great addition to Coach Prome uh, in the Iowa State basketball program. So I'm excited for his big announcement today, and we'll be sure to get something up on the site uh, as soon as we hear. Uh, just to uh, give you an update on BC Divide, the week uh, we're going to have here uh, uh, tomorrow night, we have our BC Divide show on Mediacom, Channel 22, 822 High Definition, or you can stream that live on bcdivide.com. That starts from 5 o'clock, and we'll run from 5 to 6, and that'll be Derek and I. will uh, chat with some players and do our best to uh, kind of rehash the games and then move on to the weeks ahead. Um, speaking of weeks ahead, Iowa State will have a bye week this week. Uh, Coach uh, Campbell was on the teleconference this morning. Mike Green said there will be no player interviews this week, no coaching interviews as they kind of get a little R&R &R time and we'll be continuing to put in work uh, at the practice facility in the weight room, obviously, but uh, we'll keep them away from media to get a little caught up on their studies as well. So, um, yeah, Friday night, uh, BC Divide Football Show will be hosting, uh, or I'll be hosting uh, over on Mediacom, Channel 22, 822. Derek will be out of the field. We've got a big matchup, a uh, couple big matchups actually at the high school level this week. So um, please uh, do your part. Jump on bcdivide.com. Share that with your friends and family. Follow us on Twitter at bcdivide. And then uh, jump on our Facebook page and give us a like at bcdivide. Uh, we are the one and only rivalry site dedicated to the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Iowa State Cyclones. And uh, we also got word this morning that uh, I'll be credentialed for the uh, Big 12 men's basketball uh Media days will be coming up in October, so I'll be taking a trip down to Kansas City and getting some interviews with uh, Coach Brome, the rest of the coaches of the Big 12, and then uh, whoever Iowa State decides to bring down their the basketball team. So exciting time, Cyclone Nation, two and one uh, by a week, and then we got Texas on national TV. Looking forward to it. I'm out.